Europa Universalis 4 is a game that really allows you to explore a lot of different ways of playing your nations and one of these ways is of course going down the colonial path as today's nation Portugal which historically had one of the greatest colonial empires alongside the Spanish Empire, the English and so on with the Portuguese basically paving the way for future colonization by other nations within the western predominantly western parts of Europe. What makes Portugal really special in Europa Universalis 4 however especially with the King of Kings DLC is the fact that it reigns supreme for the first few years in the colonization game since it can discover and colonize before any other nation due to its unique flavor and that's exactly what we'll be doing today we'll be establishing a colonial slash trade empire as we'll be going both in the new world and in the Asian bits and we'll be showing why exactly the Portuguese are unmatched and unrivaled when it comes to colonization. And hey, for just 8,000 likes, we're gonna do a brand new Castile run where we form the Roman Empire as the Castilians in extremely fast timing, let's say. Yeah, we're gonna speed run that one. Hey, whilst you're here, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach 190,000 subs by the end of the year, which is fast approaching, so probably not gonna happen, but at least I gotta try, right? Now, that little thing that I was talking about that is a flavor for the Portuguese that helps them become a better colonial nation is of course their flagship which we will be building before we do so we do have to do our estate so we're gonna give out the plus one mana privilege for all three of the estates don't forget to also summon the diet and seize the crownlands also recommend giving out the clerical education together with the court positions and the burger economic freedom burger financial demand patronage of the arts also helps out with getting some extra prestige in the early part of the campaign increased levies will help you get more manpower so you have enough troops to fight in your campaigns supremacy over the crown main purpose is going to be to give the uh, loyalty equilibrium for all three of the estates which you're going to be struggling a little bit with at the start we're going to give private trade fleets and the burger loans just so we get 50 percent burger equilibrium for loyalty for the clergy we just need to give one more and that is of course going to be religious diplomats and something that might be a little bit controversial the monopoly on wine which offers five percent like loyalty equilibrium so we go over the 50 percent threshold and no influence it also gives one mercantilism and 73 from wine production up front. That is eight years worth of production. Now take note, we do not have any other wine provinces we're going to be expanding in, into in the next few years. So it makes no difference. It's actually worth giving that privilege at the first bit of the campaign. You can get rid of it whenever you want to, of course. If you're interested more about all this estate stuff, you can watch my estate video. And I'm actually thinking to make a brand new estate video for 1.36. Let me know if, if you guys want to see that. Some things have changed. A lot of new privileges have been added and I kind of want to address all of that. Rival wise, obviously all of North Africa is going to be our rival. We want to actually have an alliance with the Castilians. Now take note, you can get permanent claims on the entirety of Castile and you can actually eat up all of Castile and all of the Iberian Peninsula for that matter if you wanted to but doing that means you're going to be delaying your colonial part so if you're going to be expanding into Iberia it's not going to be as beneficial as going into the colonies and maybe even later down the line changing over and becoming say Brazil which is something you can do by the way and then you have a capital in the new world and you can have your capital in the new world directly own lands in the new world and have colonial nations too whilst directly owning lands. It's a bit of a unique thing that the Portuguese can easily achieve. We're also going to hire Mr. Gomez since he is a uh, level 2 advisor that is 50% cheaper and they diplo reputation advisor works. Now we can build that uh, juicy flagship. So it's going to be a light ship of course to give it a proper Portuguese name. Albeit that's probably a Brazilian one but you know I digress. It's basically the same thing isn't it? Now the Portuguese have a very different situation because we have unique Portuguese traits and this is what makes the difference for the Portuguese when it comes to the colonial game we get plus 1.25 fleet exploration range now this allows us to explore a ton more than most nations would be able to at the beginning of the freaking campaign it makes a huge difference now fleet naval barrage cost minus 40% is again insane and I'll show you in a few moments why as is trade power per ship and fleet dude that is double the normal amount of trade power than anybody else would do so essentially the Portuguese 
Portuguese have the ability to not only have a colonial empire, but with this change here to the ship traits, you can have a massive trade empire by simply building a ton of uh, light ships and having trade companies to get those extra merchants, which you can do from the African continent or from Asia and so on early on in the campaign. Okay, let's fill up our land force limit. Also actually going to delete my fort in Evora since I don't really need the fortification there. And here's the other thing that makes the Portuguese insane. The Portuguese Marines Naval Doctrine offers naval barrage cost minus 50% alongside 15% Marines blockade impact on sea and national sailors modifier. What this means is that barraging forts by the coastline is 90% cheaper. It means it only costs 5 mana points. Wait, that's 5, right? I think it's 5. Yeah, it's 5 mana points to barrage fortifications. That is insane, dude. You can do that from 1444. What the hell, man? That is so broken. It also makes the Portuguese a freaking military powerhouse if they wanted to. Even you could go ahead and establish yourselves in the Mediterranean if you want it. Get over to those juicy Genoese uh, nodes if you want to trade wise, right? Also take note, we start as an ally of the English. This is the oldest alliance in history, by the way, in case you're wondering. And uh, we're going to make use of this alliance, of course, when fighting in uh, Europe, which is going to happen at some point, right? Or at the very least, we keep it as a, a sort of a protective net in case anybody tries to attack us. It will backfire as well, since uh, they might bring us into some wars with the French, which would not be ideal. An alliance with the Pope also is a very good idea since uh, it allows us to get more papal influence so make sure you also improve your relations with the Pope being on the good side of the Pope means we might have a bigger chance of uh, getting colonial possessions assigned to us. So that means we're going to get five extra settlers in those areas that the Pope assigned to us, right? As our colonial rightful lands. We also split off three of our ships here and we're going to assign Mr. Diogo Gomez as our explorer. And we're going to start exploring with the western parts of the African coastline. After we got the flagship built, we're going to put that flagship in the same fleet with Diego. And then he can uh, start exploring everything around really the rest of the light ships we're gonna make them assigned uh, to the civilian node to protect it and speaking of we're gonna also give out the uh, protect trade in both of these uh, areas here hell even in south that works so we get more of the uh, power in the civilian node and as such we get more money as consequence also guys we have available the holy orders as the portuguese that include the benedictines carthusians and a lot of other ones yeah there's a lot of them and it makes a huge difference to be fair having a lot more of these remember that it costs only 50 of whatever mana points and then you get one of that particular group development in each of province of the state so say we spend 50 diplo to get five base production in here which is huge that would actually cost 250 uh, to develop uh, actually more 300 mana points to develop uh, production five times but we only use 50 so you should use both of your uh, state you should assign uh, holy orders in both both of these at the beginning in my opinion since it helps out the entirety of the campaign some of the good ones are for example goods produce modifier plus 10 percent since it is permanent for that state right the tax modifier and production government cost is also pretty huge development cost is pretty huge honestly pretty much all of them are amazing even the hostile movement speed reduction with the manpower modifier i don't know it's gonna be a tough choice i am gonna be getting uh personally the local goods produced modifier in both of the states but i'm not gonna do it just yet i'm gonna do it after i get the admin tech five so I can unlock my exploration idea. So I'm basically just AFKing until I get admin take five right now. Take note, you can also get permanent claims on North Morocco, Leon, Estremadura, and Lower Andalusia, which is basically the entire borderline with the Castilians from the get-go. You just need to have basically more troops and more um, navy. So it occurs naturally. Same goes here. We have a strong alliance with the English. We get more permanent claims on the entirety of North Castile and uh, Galicia, as well as 10% morale of armies for 20 years. So it tells you that you can destroy Castile if you wanted to. I did choose to ally them though. So I'm going to stick with the alliance for now. But we always have that option if we wanted to go down the path, right? 1447 and we stop being a regency because Portugal starts off as a regency. So now we can actually attack nations. Of course, we're going to be attacking the uh, first rival here of Tlemcen. We're going for the humiliate rival CB. So we can actually get 100 of each mana points afterwards and... Uh, 
that should be it. Let's Gucci. We don't need anything else to be fair. So um, I'm okay with just this. We might get military access through the Moroccans. Conditional access that is uh, because Tlemcen might get the access. Oh, did they rival each other? They didn't. So it's very likely that we will get the access. If that doesn't happen, we'll just use our fleet. We have way more ships than they have. There you go. Let's transfer 11 troops over there now. If that's the case. And they have 8,000 units. So we can literally get more troops landed in their lands as it is. Clearly, we're going to be abusing the fact that we have that 90% cheaper barrage. And we're going to barrage the fort in Dara, making our life a lot easier when it comes to taking these fortifications. Come on, give me that military access, bro. The Duke of Coimbra, until the end of our leader, get uh, some bonuses or just one stab. I'm going to go for the one stab. I don't care about those bonuses too much right now. Now, it is very important that we bring our flagship here so we take full advantage of uh, the barrage. Right now it's 25 because we don't have the flagship in our fleet but that's going to change in a few seconds because now Gina is in uh, here and Gina is going to bring it down to 5 mana points. Booyah snoky dongs. Hot diggity dong boys. Okay that was really, I don't know if I should say brave or stupid on Tlemcen's side but they did actually try to fight my units so uh, unsuccessfully tried to fight my units to, more, to be more precise. Dara is ours. Now let's uh, try and rush on over for uh, Tala Imsan. They are now at war with the Tunisians because Tunis actually attacked Jared, their ally. So we need to be careful. We need to make sure we get the 100% war score against Tlemcen before the Tunisians do. So we don't need to wait around for them essentially. With their capital siege down, we have 60% of the war score. So now we're just going to uh, carpet siege what we haven't sieged already. And we're going to do a white piece with uh, Jared since they're fully occupied by Tunis. I'm pretty sure they are more than happy to see this white piece from us. All right, 99% war score. That means we can do the show of strength. There you go, 138, 127. And as consequence, we got enough mana points to get the uh, very first Admin Tech 4 and Diplo Tech 4. We're not going to bother with Diplo Tech 5 as much, but once we have Admin Tech 5, we can get our exploration ideas. And as such, we can uh, start exploring the new world and colonizing, essentially. Now let's uh, go ahead and set these bad boys over here. Because we have the flagship, we're going to separate the flagship and we're going to get another two more barks in here. And all three of these guys, Diogo, you're going to be in charge of it. Start exploring now the uh, entirety of the Atlantic because we have the range to do so. So by the time that we get our exploration ideas and we're able to colonize, we already will have explored the entirety of the Atlantic. I do not need that many Karaks though. So I'm going to be selling most of these Karaks. I think I actually got some from the war with Lemchen. I'm not sure. Did I start with five? I don't even remember. Look at that. The the uh, Castilians want to buy one of my Karaks. Hails to the yeah. The Aragonese as well want to buy one. Even the Britons. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. What about the uh, English? Well, we're going to have to wait until the English don't have loans so they can buy our Karaks though. So let's go ahead and get our light ships and set them up to protect trade in Sevilla whilst we're waiting for that colonization. And I'm going to start eating a little bit of food and uh, getting a coffee in the meanwhile. Well, what a surprise. Morocco attacked Lemchen as expected. Hmm. We seem to have discovered a some nation by the coast of Africa. Well, well, it appears like we're not the only ones around in this little planet of ours, are we? This year, boys, is exactly what I'm talking about. We haven't yet gotten exploration ideas, but because of this amazing flagship, we are in fact uh, making our way to the Caribbean. It's a little bit of a weirder path because we're not going straight. We're going through the northern bits of the Atlantic and then rushing down alongside the coastline of North America. Uh, not gonna say it's a strange path. I mean, it is a strange path, but it is a path, I guess, after all. We can also do this mission where we get the uh, claims on the uh, Castilians as well as morale of armies for 20 years. So I'm going to keep this. I'm not going to get it just yet. I don't want to upset the Castilians for the time being, at least. Okay, this has got to be the very first time that I actually see the Polish going down the peaceful path when it comes uh, to the Bohemians. They didn't go for the restoration of Union for some reason. Now, guys, I also want to talk a little bit about why the European colonized the new world because reality is that the reason the Portuguese ended up in the new world is simply by chance. It all started in the Ottoman Empire when the Ottomans took out the Byzantine Empire and they conquered Constantinople. They essentially cut off the entirety of Europe from the goods of the Silk Road coming in from Asia which was coming into Constantinople and then from Constantinople the Venetians were getting it and uh, transferring it all around the European bits 
Now, when that stopped, the Europeans had to search for a new path to Asia because going through the Middle East was not viable anymore. That's essentially what the purpose of uh, going west was. They thought that they could go across the Atlantic and end up in Asia. They didn't expect that there would be a massive continent in between uh, Europe and the Asian bits. This is also a point to make here because a lot of people think that in the Middle Ages people thought that the world is flat. They did not think so. They thought that the world is round. They actually thought that the world is round for a very long time even before the Middle Ages for that matter. From antiquity they thought that the world is round. Look at that. Now we can go for Atlantic South America and we can also explore the coastline of everything that we've already explored here which we're gonna do of course. So excited to see what lies in these uh, unexplored areas of the world. Well 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 as expected nobody living here nobody uh, uh, uh no nobody at all living here uh, it's just um just trees trees and coconuts and i think i'm gonna go for the uh, curtail noble privilege here because uh i need the extra tax to boost up my economy a tiny bit to help out with the colonization to colonize faster obviously as consequence and i don't really care about the manpower too much i'm mainly just gonna be fighting natives this entire freaking campaign and that essentially means we're fighting you know like one of our soldiers is the equivalent of a thousand of the people that um that don't exist actually I, I forgot snaps huzzah we are able to get our very first idea set obviously that is going to be the exploration ideas and i forgot to save up my uh, diplo points and i got military uh, uh, diplotech five so kind of on me there <laughs> it's fine it's fine we're gonna rush for this and uh, we're gonna start exploring any moment now to send over miss gina here to find out what's going on in the uh, southern bits of south america would be cool if the new world was not necessarily called America right would be cool if you could choose what the new world is called maybe that would be a future feature in uh, U5 who's to say right we could call it the Ludania <laughs> yep that's a stupid name okay now I can get my uh, local organization so I'm gonna go of course for the uh, Benedictines which offer goods produced plus 10% and unrest reduction but most importantly we get 10 tax development from just spending 100 admin points which is an actual freaking no-brainer in my opinion now take no as the uh, Portuguese, you have a superpower in the form of the unique Portuguese colonial growth that offers settler increase plus 50. That is a freaking huge amount of settler increase. And we're also going to start our golden era, which offers an extra minus 10% uh, mana for everything that we use, uses 10% power cost or mana cost, whatever you want to call it, alongside a few of the bonuses here. So totally worth to get early on in the campaign. I'd say actually 1480s is the best moment, but as the Portuguese, you can do it a little bit faster than that it doesn't make much of a difference since the early bit of the campaign is when the portuguese really outshine everybody else halfway there we managed to get our ability to recruit explorers and conquistadors i really shot myself in the foot by uh, getting a uh, diplomatic tech five i i shouldn't have done that i, sh I should have gone for the conquistador and then afterwards i should have gone for the diplomatic tech but it's fine it happens all right now let's go ahead and explore the rest of the caribbean since we uh have extended our range a tiny bit come on diego do your thing you know guys i really like that we have so many starting generals and admirals in u4 that have in fact historically existed mr diogo gomez over here for example was a knight in the portuguese court that also acted as an explorer he was sent on exploration missions around the african coast and he even conducted the slave raids he was a part of a greater fleet uh, which basically captured the berber slaves and brought them back to Portugal. So that kind of makes me wonder why doesn't Portugal have the ability to do slave raids like the Berber nations do, right? Historically, they did do slave raids, a lot of them in the 1400s, and grew to be one of the biggest empires whose main, uh, you know, trade goods in U4 terms was that particular trade good. They really should allow the Portuguese to do that, in my opinion. Just personal opinion. What do you think? Should they do that? Let me know in the comment section. Now, considering that I don't really have anything I need from uh, a military perspective. I'm just gonna go for the extra tax and construction cost reduction from the Holy See right now. We need that extra juicy monies. We're not too bad off though. We're making a good five ducats, which is average, let's say. Ooh, we baby, here we go. Colonist has been achieved. Now we can choose our native uh, repressive policy and we can do our mission here. Beyond the Cape Bojador, gain three innovativeness and some settler chance plus 20%, which is a huge 
huge amount, by the way. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to send off this colonist to uh, Cape Verde to colonize it. And we're going to get claims on uh, Jolof because we're going to attack him, take one province or a couple of provinces. And that's going to increase our range, which means we could technically get a second colonist afterwards and start colonizing the uh, Brazilian bits in the 1460, pretty much 15 years before anybody can even get this done. Oh, Iberian wedding. That was fairly freaking quick. Okay, what do we have here? Let's see. 105 settlers per year is delicious and 36% settler chance. What does this mean? Obviously, everybody knows, but in case you don't know, settler chance be basically gives you a percentage chance of getting more settlers each month than uh, the default here. So 105 per month mean you get around 10-ish settlers per month, but this gives you a more settlers. It's a little bit of RNG, but it can, if you're lucky, colonize this entire province in one, two years. That's how powerful that can be. I mean, there you go. We already had one month past that we got double, or actually we got like 30, 40 settlers extra, didn't we? Let's go ahead and bring our units here so we're getting ready for the attack on Jolof. And of course, as soon as I did that, I have freaking uh, Portuguese noble rebels that I need to fight now. These are some of the worst rebels because every single province they take increases the crownlands of the nobility, which is something I don't want it to happen, right? I'm also going to give out the established new world mission that offers assimilation plus 50%, making it a little bit quicker to uh, colonize provinces. Now, because of that, we can get the new world missions uh, decision that offers an extra assimilation plus 50% and uh, uprising chance minus 50%. So basically, uh, natives are going to be a lot less inclined to uprise, but we're going to do that later because right now in uh, Capo Verde, there's no natives at all to speak of. We're also going to merge up our fleets for the time being because we're about to start the war against uh, Jolof. We cannot rely on any of our allies in this war, but that's okay because we don't need them. Jolof has, uh, what, they've got Tech 2, Tech 3, Military Tech 2. That says it all in my opinion. That says absolutely everything you need to know about Jolof's uh, offensive capabilities, let's say. We got Military Tech 6, so we're actually going to be freaking crushing them left and right. And remember, end of the day, we just need one province from them to extend our range. Because unlike my previous Portugal run, the main goal of this one is to abandon the old world and get into Brazil and then get back the old world provinces as Brazil. So as such, we don't want to have too many provinces around here. We don't want to bother ourselves with these lands for the time being, right? Otherwise, if I was to stick as Brazil, I would take the entire coastline here because this is, of course, a part of the Ivory Coast, the trade node, one of the most valuable trade nodes around. I think Jolof's army is hiding somewhere because I haven't even fought them yet, uh, but that's fine with me. I got the capital, so that's enough to get these two provinces. I could try and push for it so I get some money, but I don't care about it too much. I would have to fight their allies, which is Timbuktu, Jenny, and Kong. Don't want to be bothered with that at all. So let's go with this. Buyashnokos. We have to core this first because Kayur is outside of our coring range. But once this is cored, Kayur is within the coring range, as is also pretty much all of South America after. Now we can also do another mission, colonize West Africa. It gives us an explorer and 100 diplo points, which means we can do our third idea. And that also means we got colonial range plus 20% from our national ideas and plus 50% from the idea itself from exploration. So we have 70% extra colonial range, meaning we can bring this guy back here and we're going to colonize all the way into Brazil or we can even reach the island of Borican, which has a thousand natives. I'm going to do that quickly. So guys, whenever you're doing a colonial game and this goes for any nation, not just Portugal, always focus on the Caribbeans first because the Caribbeans is basically where most of the uh, trade from the new world will be filtering into before filtering afterwards into Europe. So if you own the Caribbean, you can stop it from going into Europe. And also by getting this colony in uh, Borican, we have afterwards access to uh, getting colonies all over North America, Central America, and just essentially expanding like actually freaking crazy. We could get a second colony after in Borado or over here, and then we can just start killing off everybody in Central America where we have how many gold mines? We got like 12 gold mines over in the Aztec areas. So there's a lot of possibilities. Of course, I'm also going to be colonizing South America, especially the Brazil area. If we go over to our colonial and trade regions, this area, since I plan on changing over to Brazil, half for the memes, but also half for the other memes, really. That also increased our range with the uh, Kayor, so uh, we can uh, core that up right now. We don't need to wait for um, Terraza to finish. Now, I'm going to be separating another three light ships once more, Gina and two more, and I'm going to get our secondary explorer, Ignacio, the whatever his name is, bring him over here so we can start exploring the world and there you go exploration 
let's go with uh, the rest of the Caribbean. I'm going to get another three ships afterwards with Mr. Diogo. And he's going to explore other parts that we can explore as well. Keep the rest of the light ships as my uh, trade ships in the civilian node for now. And the uh, transports, we're going to be transporting an ar army to uh, Borican so we can wipe out the native. I mean, uh, explore and make sure nobody uh, lives here, of course. The way if you find out if there's any natives, you click the find out if there's natives buttons and let's see. Yep, don't know there's uh, zero natives. Um, so that's um, that's good. That's good because otherwise you never know. We might have had issues in the future. Now, all, all jokes aside, guys, though, if you keep the natives, then you do get a bonus once you finish the colony to your production. But if you don't keep the natives, then you don't need to keep an army here anymore afterwards. You can do something else with the army because there's no natives to rebel if they don't exist, right? So there's pros and cons to whatever approach you want to do. It's also a good idea whenever you get your uh, diet to selected to go for some colonial stuff. So here, for example, we can go for the burgers one, which uh, we just need to colonize a province in Brazil, which we were going to do anyway. And that's going to give us an extra 5% central chest and 25 flat settlers. We also have the extra grand new world charter privilege I was talking about before that offers 5% extra settlers chance and uh, 10 flat settlers. So now we're actually getting how many? We're getting 39% settler chance and 115 settlers red, which is in uh, layman terms freaking insane if you ask me brother also a good thing to point out guys is that uh you can have on average two or one extra colonies going compared to the amount of colonists that you have so because we have one colonist i'm doing two colonies it does cost a hundred percent more and then it doubles as you progress with extra colonies compared to your colon size so if i was to have three colonies i would basically go bankrupt very soon because i would have like what 12 maintenance for colonial which is more than i can actually afford an added benefit of the uh, new world charter privilege is that you increase your colonial range by 10% and you can get one more explorer now we can have three leaders when it comes to our naval stuff so uh what well, a navy so we have three explorers as we speak we don't need all three though to be fair but we have them in case we ever need them right and because we have the extra colonial range we can reach all around to pick what with our closest uh lands being in freaking what madeira or something yep these are about to finish so when these are done we can colonize all the way to Tierra del Fuego and all the way to Newfoundland. So it's uh, it's pretty broken, I'd say. It's uh, The colonial range is not an issue for the Portuguese whatsoever. And even more settlers, boys. Increased by another 10 now. How close are we to finishing uh, Cape Verde? It's almost done. It's actually almost freaking done in just three years. That is super fast. We also got these two uh, fully cored. So now, once we uh, finish with the Cape Verde, let's see what we're going to go for just to expand our range. I like to do the first colonies far away from each other so I expand my range and I have the availability of uh, colonizing whatever the schnapps I ever want to colonize. Also take note if you don't want to form colonial nations in the new world what you can do is you can colonize Bermuda change your capital to Bermuda and this way you do not form any colonial nations in the new world. You directly take control of all provinces that are colonized. If you don't do that then whenever you have within a colonial region five colonies fully colonized it automatically creates a new colony. Colony. By five colonies, I mean five provinces fully colonized. That creates a colony. Alternatively, by just changing your capital to the New World anywhere else except for Bermuda also prevents new, uh, nations from forming. Take note though, any nations that were formed prior to you changing your capital to the New World will stick around as colonial nations. And the way you can change your capital from the Old World is either you're the only province in your co continent, which is basically abusable as we all know. You can also change it to Bermuda, like I said, which is kind of an exploit. Or you can just lose every province except your capital in um, in Europe and then you can change it as well or you're gonna do what we do and we lose a certain amount of provinces keep a few and then we change over to Brazil that's also a unique flavor that the Portuguese have now you can also get your uh, second bonus here colony development boost plus one which goes hand in hand with the settler increase so once you finish getting your colonies done you're gonna get more development in those uh, finished colonies as consequence oh hell yeah baby okay Verde's done, everyone. Make it a full state. And now let's uh, bring back this colonist from here. Actually, he's almost done. I'm going to let him finish this and then I'm going to use him afterwards. Take note, if you do not have a uh, colonist, you don't get the uh, settler chance. You only get the settler chance if there's a colonist colonizing. So if you have a province that is uh, without the colonist, he only that province only gets the flat spread per year, not the settler chance. And the rich harbor is here. That means um, we also have the monument. Uh, Fuerte del Moro, which offers for the overlord 30% and 
extra naval force limit as well as for yourself if you're not the overlord 30 percent naval force limit and a few other things now that being said let's uh use our colonist here he's back so check it out boys with the funk oh brother look at that look at that we can literally colonize all the way till the northern bits as i said before newfoundland we can start a colony in newfoundland and after that's done we can colonize everything else in north america or or alternatively we can just start colonizing brazil i'm gonna do brazil first actually so um which area has more development pernambuco has 10 let's go with the 10 development here i'm gonna do two provinces in brazil for that matter or i'm gonna do one in brazil and one over here so i can uh start wiping out the uh, natives in central america that works as well too yeah that way we have something to do we don't just uh, chill and uh, do nothing really okay he's arrived recall him and now that he's recalled let's send him over here boy schnooky donks and let's also send our army to wipe out i mean uh to explore these areas i might not wipe out natives actually i might just keep six and six thousand and then uh bring the entire army to per uh, borado so i can attack uh, the aztec area now we're talking an extra 10 percent settler chance now holy snaps boys look at that 43 percent when we almost finish colonizing this province as well all right we now got our first claim here so let's go with the first war against these boys yokotan uh can we cobbledrate no we don't need to cobbledrate but we will take some stuff of course six military compared to two military means it's gonna be an actual freaking uh, bloodbath right here here's a little trick you can do if you want to push into the asian bits as well and you could have done this even earlier if you wanted to of course uh send a colonist to gabon get the claim on congo bring the colonists back you don't need to finish the colony take the province in congo core it up and that exchange your range it, it increases your range then you can do your colony in natal and then just hop around go into the islands afterwards and you can reach asia by you can reach indochina the peninsula or indonesia for that matter by 1475 1440 76 if you wanted to right like i said not my main focus in this run so i'm not going to give any snaps about that that means i'm going to set off my second colonist over actually you know what let's send him over into brazil no no i'm going to have a little bit of a colony in the northern bits as well so let's go with um the province of uh, Wicontis, which has a lot of uh, aggression so we're gonna have to wipe out those natives there afterwards but we're doing that so we have a friendly portuguese colony colonizing the northern american bits for us right speaking of let's get a claim on these guys so we can attack them after the war with the uh, huastec i'm coming for those cocoa beans yokotan where my cocoa beans at huh i need some cocoa that's what this whole war is really about it's about getting that juicy cocoa into me i mean what wait what did i just say all right we got sales of exploration because we fully did the exploration idea so we can get one diplo for alfonso v there you go juicy von struzzi i just realized i'm missing a lot of ships what the hell am i doing with my life i need to build up light ships as many as possible why the hell did i not build up my light ships is beyond me right now that's gonna give us permanent claims on a lot of areas especially areas within the uh kill one lands and the mutapan lands and so on so we need those permanent claims obviously for that quick expansion right essentially most of our uh, mission tree does revolve around colonizing which is a really really great thing for our tier three government reform we have the unique council of the indies because we are iberian culture so we could technically go for this this is really good from a trade perspective you also get more money from your treasure fleets but i personally like to get the extra five percent settler chance and i can change later down the line to the council of the indies when i have established colonies earlier on it's better to just get the settler chance to build up those colonies faster all right baby time to get our first three lands from the mayans noise all right uh let's core it up and let's get the other lands from the non-mayans the aztecs oh man the biggest issue now is that i have to wait for a thousand years for my diplomats to come back from the new world time for a new war after coring is max watch i don't need to wor wait for coring i just need to get my claim really okay i also want to mention that after you've gotten possessions in the african areas honestly the best choice is to make these possessions uh into trade companies why is that well because once you have uh the majority of the trade power in a trade node with your trade companies you get an extra merchant well, that's a big big deal now here i also want to recommend that you do these provinces into trade companies after you've converted them to your religion so i converted the lands i took from uh, jolof to catholic as such i can add these provinces up to uh be trade companies of course that means you have to make them stop being a uh full state if you were to make trade companies and you can also add every province that's not within a state to a trade company from an entire trade node by clicking this button over here again i'm not doing that because i'm going brazil but if i was not going brazil i would 100 
and do that. I'm just letting you know in case you want to do it. Holy 500 Dukatenstein. Don't mind if I do, sir. We also managed to get Go Westward mission by getting this uh, colony in Brazil, our initial colony there in Pernambuco. And remember, this was uh, 10 development, but it went up to 13 development because of the plus one colonial boost from higher developed uh, colonies uh, bonus. It would appear, Potiguara, that you're lying on my lands and I'm not really cool with that, okay? It's time we teach you a lesson in trying to grab land from the rightful owners, all right? Shut up. I didn't see you here before. You have no proof of it also. Where's your documents and your flag? No flag, no country cannot have. Nuh-uh. In the, in the wise words of Eddie Easter. Goes without saying your second national idea should be, um, well, idea group should be uh, exploration ideas, which offers an extra two colonists, settler chance, and a lot of other goodies. 20% more settlers and so on. And I know what some of you are thinking. Why didn't you go uh, expansion first? I could have gone expansion first. That is true, actually, because I would have had the colonial range and the uh, starting explorer, right? Uh, Diego. So I could have done that. I could have gone for exploration afterwards. It would have been a lot faster. And I think the, the answer to that is just uh, shut up, okay? Mind your own business. Colony number one is done. We can set them up as a crown colony or if we set them up as a private enterprise or so self-governing colony, they will expand a little bit faster. Self-governing colonies get plus one extra colonists whilst the crown colonies do not. But there's not much to colonize around here and I want them as a crown colony because I'm going to be feeding them all of the uh, Mexican bits from all of the natives that are going to be disappearing soon. Plus, this is this is a horrible name. I'm not going to call them Portuguese Mexico. I'm going to give them the um, the uh, real name of this region. E Macarena. Uh, that's, uh, that's what they like to be called, all right? Excuse me, bro? What are you doing here? Mixtec. Uh, how do I put this into kind words? Screw you. Get out of here. You're going to say no? And, oh, no, they said yes. Okay, never mind. I thought they are going to say no, and then I'm going to be in a war against them. In case somebody attacks your colonies, remember, you can always enforce peace on that nation that attacked your colony. If they say no, you join the war and you screw them up. If they don't say no, then they say yes, in which case they do a white peace. So... You got what I'm saying? I'm also going to answer a very asked question. How come, Ludi, uh, sometimes when I annex vast, when I annex natives, they don't disappear? So, if you just go ahead and you annex like this, what's going to happen is this nation is going to migrate to another adjacent province, right? However, if you want to get rid of them, you go to treaties, annex migrating tribe, and then annex as well. And that means they're not going to exist anymore afterwards. But I want them to exist. Hear me out, right? By doing this, they're also going to be paying us some tribute. But most importantly, them going to an adjacent province means that we're going to have another province we can take when the truce is over in 15 years or whatever years without having to colonize it. So it's a good thing. It's actually a very good thing. Colonial policy is also going to give us until the end of the game plus 10 settlers in return for one corruption or global tariffs. Obviously go for the plus 10 settlers. The only downside to doing this, by the way, is that uh, you're going to have to convert the province to your religion and to your culture afterwards because it's gonna be uh, the religion of the native which is whatever that might be animist or whatever so now with the three provinces we took from the natives we actually have all the provinces we need to form Brazil colonial nation we just need to wait for these three provinces to finish coring up uh, that is it so why am I changing the religion before I'm coring this up that's uh, that's not smart at all look how fast we're snowballing to 165 settlers now <laughs> brother what is going on here all right I also got cannons so I'm gonna be recruiting uh, four cannon pieces and two more or four more uh, infantry. So we have 12, 4, 4 should be enough to deal with pretty much any native we might encounter in this particular run. And whilst I'm waiting for all of these colonies and all of these truces and everything else to finish, I'm going to hunt for the seven cities with my conquistador. This has a chance of me discovering where the seven cities are and I get a massive amount of bonuses as consequence. Plus, this automatically explores all of the uh, terra incognita in the new world without me having to manually go from province to province to explore stuff. Like we did another mission to here. The competitive advantage that offers even more claims around uh, North Africa. Launch a flagship as well. Gives us 20 uh, army naval tradition and a shipyard in Lisbon. And we're very close to getting this as well. Once we have six shipyards, we can get until the end of the game. The galleons and the caravels. Unique ships for the uh, Portuguese brother. Even in the new world, we're getting comet sighted. It's an omen, everyone. It's the big peepee -pee time in the sky. Get our stability. 
ability back up. Thank you very much. Now, when it comes to Brazil, we're going to get these guys as a self-governing colony. Remember that I said before, self-governing colonies have one extra colonist, so we can let them chill by themselves for a while, let them grow into a massive empire before we switch on over to Brazil. And we're going to, of course, give them the proper real name of Brazil, which is uh, Bra 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 Brazil. Results? That's the actual name, in case you're wondering. I know some people think it's Brazil with an IL, but they're just, they're wrong. If you don't want to do it via the um, events when you lose lands in Europe, you can also just switch on over here. You can click release as one of your colonies and click and then just play as release subject and uh, click set. I didn't mean to do that. I click sent a little bit too fast. Uh, this might be a little bit of an issue. <laughs> Can you imagine if we were to play as Brazil from 1485 with like just these five provinces? Oh my god. <laughs> this would be the most cancerous playthrough ever, bro. Like actually. You know what? I'm actually inclined to do this. I'm not gonna alt F4. I'm not gonna alt F4. I'm actually gonna do this. Tell you what. Let's get the light goal. Add an extra 500 in that. And then we'll play as Brazzers. And we're gonna have a little bit of a harder challenge. But we're gonna be crushing the entirety of the new world as this amazing nation. How's that sound? And hey, if you enjoyed this run, until the next time, check out my friend's video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.